Okay, so my main OS on my Raspberry Pi 4 is still Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit running KDE as a desktop environment. And just last week, we got an update on Raspberry Pi OS. And it's based around various things, uh, mostly security. Uh, and if you have a look at most of the stories that are here, you can see there's one story that's had a lot more comments than anything else. So 135 comments, an update to Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. So one of the things which we spend a lot of time thinking about here at Raspberry Pi is security. Cyber attacks and hacking are sadly constantly on the increase and Raspberry Pi computers are as much a target as any other, just because there are so many of them out there nowadays. Now the first change is uh, the default Pi username is being taken away. And when you first start up the operating system, it's just not gonna be there. You're gonna to have to create a username and a password. If you've already got your operating system installed and it's up to date, you can already change the username. I've already changed the password on this. Uh, I always do really. Um, but the username, I often don't bother to change, but for extra security, they're suggesting that you can. So I'll come back to the first bit. But uh, what I wanna do first of all is show this one, existing installations. So as my system is already up to date, I just need to add this to terminal. So let's do control alt T and paste that in. There you go, preparing to run wizard, please wait. The wizard will be launched on reboot to rename the user. Would you like to reboot now? Yes. So I'm not sure it's gonna start right on mine because as you can see, it's come up as Pi and it's just asked me to log in. I'll put in my password. So it does look like it's booting up the same at the moment. Okay, so it doesn't work in this environment. Let's try logging out and booting back in. So log out. Ah, what was that screen? That was the screen I wanted. Okay, so what do I have to change it onto here? Default X session probably. Okay, so now I'm back in Bullseye. Let's try that again. So Control Alt T, sudo rename dash user, and yes. So you probably saw it flash up on the screen again. It obviously is running in the background, uh, but I just can't seem to find it. Now if I press the Windows and Tab key, uh, which would show me the desktop and anything that's running, it's just not showing up. So I don't quite know how to get to it, but it's not a bad thing. If I go back to the browser, uh, I, I read on in the story. I was gonna look in the comments and see if anybody else had the same, but I came across this bit. One word of caution, most Raspberry Pi software, if it was written properly, should handle having the home directory renamed and carry on working as before. But it is possible that some code may have been written with a hard-coded path to the home Pi directory. I'm sure loads of things would be. And this will need to be modified in order to work correctly with the renamed user. Uh, it also talks about VNC as well. Um, but uh, the main thing for me is, uh, you know, this is my main OS and I have all sorts of things running in it, all sorts of apps and games and things like that. And uh, I don't really want to start messing things up. So I think changing the username for me is probably not worth doing. I've already changed the password, so I'm happy enough. But obviously, any time I start a new operating system, uh, it will get me to change the username and the password. So let's have a look at what happens in Raspberry Pi OS. So let's come out of this, my main system, and I'll boot up something else. So I've got 32-bit Raspberry Pi OS on this Samsung bar. So let's boot that up. So this is from one of my older browser speed test videos. So let's click on the updates because it's picked up on updates. So show updates. There's going to be loads on this. So let's install all of those. So while it's still installing the packages, uh, if you're like me and you've got an operating system that you're in the middle of using and you're not ready to uh, kind of make things not work, uh, if I just open a terminal and uh, the first thing to do if you haven't changed your password is just type in P-A-S-S-W-D for password and then it says changing password for Pi. So current password, this is probably Raspberry on this, probably didn't change it because I, I wasn't intending to use it as my main OS. So let's try Raspberry and see if I have changed it. Yeah, so I, I hadn't changed it anyway, so that was on the default one, so exactly the thing they want to go against. So change your password, so let's change it to something else and then retype the password. <laughs> That's because I was talking while I was trying to do it. So let's do it again, password. And uh, current password is Raspberry, the default. And then the new password. There you go, password update. Now the system is more secure anyway, uh, but let's see what it does when it changes the username in a minute, when these updates are all finished. It is so much better to have these updates. Uh, here we go, so we've got to reboot anyway first, so let's reboot. And let's call up that web page again. 
So let's try it again. Open up a terminal. Let's get rid of that page. So preparing to run wizard. And yes. Okay, so this is the bit that we were waiting for. Uh, your current user pi will be renamed. So let's go, let's just call it 4B. Enter password and confirm and next. Ah, the first character of the username may be a, must be a lowercase letter. Of course it must. Should we do pi 4? Obviously not the most secure thing, but this is just a test. Restart to reboot and log in as the new user. Okay, so the first thing that's been broken has been the wallpaper, and there's almost nothing on this system. So I think with this, you're probably better off to start fresh uh, with a new install rather than changing the username. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you know what you're doing and you know how to change everything, then you can. But uh, yeah, as you can see, that's already broken something in this. So uh, I'm going to put a clean copy of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit on this Samsung bar and, uh, and see how it starts up with this new system. So I've plugged my Samsung bar in. Because I'm using KDE, I can just start typing Imager and it comes up and I can launch it like that. So let's choose OS, Raspberry Pi OS Other. So I'm going to install the 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS, not the light version. And let's hit Write. And yes. Okay, so that's all written. So let's shut this down. It's still showing that little message. And I'll boot up from the Samsung drive I've just written to. To install the screen reader, press Control Alt Space. So you could hear the Raspberry Pi then ask about installing a screen reader. I'm not going to do that, but that's a very good accessibility option. So I'm going to use a Bluetooth keyboard because this is something that's been added that wasn't there before. Now, uh, Chrome OS actually works like this. Um, so if you've got a Bluetooth keyboard, and I hope mine's charged up, uh, it should detect it if you put it into pairing mode. So I've just switched it on. Press and hold is pairing mode on this keyboard, and it should start flashing. So it's come up with a message, please enter 703764, 703764 on the Bluetooth keyboard and enter. Connection successful. Yeah, that is very useful for people who use small portable Bluetooth devices and they're setting up their system and you don't have access to a full size mouse and keyboard. So let's hit OK and Next. OK, so pop my time zone in and hit Next. So enter username, so this is the new bit. So I'm gonna call it by four. Put the password in that you wanna use twice and hit next. Set up the screen, well mine is fine, so I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna skip networks because I'm using an ethernet cable and we're gonna update the software. Shouldn't be very many updates because this is a brand new OS. It's a cool background, but I would rather it was a bit more contrasty so you can really get a good look at the pictures. But we've got Pi camera, we've got uh, Pi zeros in here, we've got Pi 400s. Look out, there may be a Raspberry Pi 5 in here somewhere. Nobody saw it on my desk just now, did they? That would be a great little Easter egg if they put that in here somewhere. So system is up to date, okay. And restart. So it's all restarted, uh, and if we go back into that article, uh, we can find one more thing. Uh, so in the style of Steve Jobs, some of you may have heard of Wayland. A proposed replacement for the X window system which has underpinned most Unix desktop environments for several decades. Now, Wayland has various advantages over X, notably security and performance, but it is still fairly new technology and hence still under development. A couple of Linux distros now run on top of Wayland, but it hasn't been widely adopted. That said, it is looking as if Wayland is likely to become the future of desktop Linux. So they've allowed you to use Wayland in this operating system, um, but uh, Bear in mind that it may not be perfect. Now, I was recommended this by Tony Baldwin, and in an email to me, he put, get latest Raspberry OS 64-bit updates, run Raspberry config, turn on Wayland backend, and run your browser benchmarks again. You're in for a nice surprise. So let's have a look. So terminal, sudo raspberry-config. They keep adding extra things in here. I think it was advanced options, yeah. So Wayland, let enable experimental Wayland backend. So we'll say yes. 
and OK. And I'm not doing this on my main OS, I'll just reboot and then I'll explain why. I've just had to switch keyboards. Uh, I'm back on my Bluetooth keyboard. I was using my Logitech one, but uh, it's stopped working uh, since rebooting. I don't know if that's something that is uh, just a coincidence or or if it's Wayland that's actually broken it. But uh, I'm typing in here, Wayland breaks everything. Uh, and it's because I'm looking for a GitHub I found. Uh, where is it? Yeah, boy, <laughs> boycott Wayland, it breaks everything. Now obviously someone's thought strongly enough about this to make a GitHub on it. Uh, you can see screen recording pro uh, programs, screen sharing applications, automation software. So don't put it on your main OS, but by all means try it out, play around with it. I mean the beauty of the Raspberry Pi is we can just boot up another OS, uh, we can play around with it, and if we don't like it we can go back to our main OS. But uh, I'm definitely going to have a go with it because I want to see how the web performance is improved by it. So we can check that Wayland is enabled by copying this into terminal. And uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming that it is working because uh, my Logitech keyboard doesn't work anymore. Uh, so let's hit enter on that. Yeah, so it says Wayland in there. Perfect, so we know that's working. Uh, so now I need to look up my uh, speed test video. So I'll go to my channel. So it was fairly recently I did all those speed tests. Yeah, web browser speed tests. And in the description, I will have all the various different tests. Let's Browsers copy on the this. Pi. And let's copy the first one in and start the test. Okay, so it's coming to the end of the first test. Is it going to be better? 19.4. Yeah, so in the first test, we've gone from 18.6 to 19.4 with Wayland enabled. So it's a good start. So I've done all the tests now, and uh, as you saw, Browser Bench was better with Wayland. Uh, the next one, Speed Battle, was actually a bit slower, 372.19 compared to 392.64 without Wayland. On WebXPRT, we had the same result, 57, uh, but we did have a much better result on Whirlpool. And uh, if we have a look at the results, uh, 576 with Wayland. Without Wayland, we had 512. So that's the web browser. I wonder what else is affected by it. Emulation would be an interesting one. Uh, so some of the systems that are harder to emulate on the Pi, uh, it would be interesting to see if they're improved by using Wayland. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.